Welcome back. Let's carry on taking more McLaurin series expansions for some functions. And the function we're going to be working on today is the natural log function, ln of x. Now, as a very brief review, you should all be really familiar with the natural log function, but this you should think of this as the exponent value you would raise your number e to in order for it to equal some particular value. So we could say that the ln of 2, this will give us a number, and that number is what you raise e to in order for this entire thing to be equal to 2. Now, we can't actually do a direct Maclaurin series expansion for the natural log. And the reason is, with the Maclaurin series, we expand about the point x is equal to 0. And for the natural log, at, at, at x equals 0, this entire function is negative infinity. It's undefined. So there are two ways we can get around this. We can expand ln of x about the point x is equal to 1, or we can do what we're going to do today, which is just going to be the Maclaurin series expansion of the function ln of 1 plus x. So expanding this about x is equal to 0. And we're going to be doing the same protocol we've seen before. This is going to be our function. We're going to take multiple derivatives of our function, evaluate them at x is equal to 0, plug them into this formula here, try and see if we can simplify and find a pattern, write it in series notation, then check the convergence of it and look at it graphically. A fairly long to-do list, but let's get started. So first things first, let's take multiple derivatives. So if our function is ln of 1 plus x, that means our first derivative, f prime of x, that's just going to be 1 over whatever is inside this ln term, which is just going to be 1 plus x. Now, typically, you do the chain rule and take uh, multiply by the derivative of what's inside. But the derivative of what's inside is just the derivative of 1, which is 0, plus the derivative of x, which is 1. So if we were to do the chain rule, we just multiply it by 1. So I'm just not even going to write that because it's not going to change the function. But I am going to rewrite this in a slightly more clearer form. I'm just going to rewrite it as 1 plus x to the negative 1 power. So now let's take the second derivative. That's going to be f double prime of x. And that's going to be equal to, we're going to drop the negative 1. It's going to come down. So we're going to have negative 1 times 1 plus x to the negative 2 power. And then we can take the third derivative, f triple prime, and that's going to be negative 2 times negative 1. And the two negatives will cancel, so I'm just going to write that as 2 times 1 times 1 plus x, now to the negative 3 power. Now the fourth derivative, that's just going to be, we're, the negative 3 is going to come down, so we're going to get negative 3 times 2 times 1 times 1 plus x to the negative fourth, and so on and so forth. Now let's use uh, plug these derivatives into our formula while evaluating them at x is equal to 0. So we're going to say that our approximation, f tilde of x, that's going to be equal to our function evaluated at 0, so ln of 1 plus 0, plus x over 1 factorial times our first derivative term evaluated at x is equal to 0, which is just 1 plus 0 to the negative 1. Plus, we're going to have x squared over 2 factorial times our second derivative evaluated at 0, negative 1 times 1 plus 0 to the negative 2 power plus x cubed over 3 factorial times our third derivative, 2 times 1, of 1 plus 0 to the negative 3, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial times our fourth derivative, which is going to be negative 3 times 2 times 1 times 1 plus 0 to the negative fourth. And we can continue this on for as many terms as need be. Let's see if we can simplify this up right here. So, let's see. Here we have ln of 1. Now, 
This should hopefully be like a knee-jerk reaction, but just in case if you don't immediately know what this is, think of this as uh, what exponent do you raise e to in order for it to equal 1? And we know that if you raise anything to the 0 power, it's going to be equal to 1. So now let's take a look at this right here. We have 1 plus 0 to the negative 1. That's just 1 to the negative 1. And if you raise 1 to any particular power, it's going to stay 1. So we can make that uh, correction with all the 1 plus 0 to the minus something powers. That those are all going to be 1. And let's just rewrite it and uh, see what we get. So we have that our approximation is equal to 0 plus 1 times x over 1 factorial. I'm just going to write that as x plus negative 1 times 1 times x squared over 2 factorial. I'm just going to rewrite that as 2 times 1. You'll see why hopefully in a little bit plus our third term, which is just 2 times 1 times 1 times x cubed over 3 factorial, which is just 3 times 2 times 1. And then we're going to get plus negative 3 times 2 times 1 times 1 times x to the 4th over 4 factorial, which is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and so on. So let's just simplify this up. That means that our approximation is equal to x minus x squared over 2. Now, here the 2 times 1 will cancel with the 2 times 1 on the, the denominator. We'll be left with positive x cubed over 3. Here we have 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the 3 times 2 times 1 will cancel. We'll be left with a negative x to the 4th over 4. And you should hopefully see the pattern from here. The, expo the exponent on the x term increases by 1. On the denominator, it's just going to be increased by 1. And the sign flips each and every time. Notice we're not actually left with a factorial term, because every time we take more derivatives, we almost have like another factorial term that we'll get on the numerator and those will simplify up and we'll just be left with the, this particular number. So we can rewrite this in our series notation, but we have to be slightly careful when we do it. So we can say that ln of 1 plus x is equal to the sum. Now, before we set our index, let's just take a look. We have x to the, we can say x to the n over n, because each and every time we increase the exponent and the denominator by 1, but notice if we do this, we have to start off at a different n value. We can't say n from n is equal to 0, because we actually start off when n is equal to 1. So this will be n is equal to 1 to infinity of x to the n over n. And we have to include this fact that the sign changes each and every time. So we can say times negative 1, and we have to raise it to an appropriate exponent. So let's see, it starts off positive then goes to negative, then positive, then negative. So we can say the exponent's n plus 1. So when we start at n is equal to 1, it'll start off with negative 1 squared, which will be positive. And then it'll flip back and forth. So here we have our Maclaurin series expansion for ln of 1 plus x. Now, I'm going to have to break this video up into do in order to do the convergence in the next video. But it's really important that you watch the next video because we'll find that this expansion doesn't hold over all values of x. This is a very particular and limited expansion, and we'll see what we mean by that in the next video.